topic, as I said tonight, would be this uh, common legal conflicts in real estate transactions. Okay, let us proceed. No? Um, ano bang mga common legal conflicts na nakikita natin? No? Actually, dalawa eh. Uh, on acquisition, yung pagbili pa lang. At saka yung ownership and possession. Once nabili na natin, uh, meron tayong possible legal conflicts no sa real estate na nai-encounter natin no and i have categorized sa acquisition dahil wala tayong due diligence conducted on the transferor how it was transferred to you either by donation or as an heir through extrajudicial settlement or as a seller and no due diligence conducted on the documents no And the third one is on the property itself, no? Bago po magbili ng property. And another one is the documentation itself, which I find very, very important that I would uh, need to discuss and teach you regarding documentation proper. Ito po yung ginagawa po pag nasa, ano na po tayo, no? Nasa uh, abogado na tayo, no? Para at least... Kahit na ginawa niya, pwede nating pasingit, sir. Baka may kulang or baka ang nilapitan natin hindi tama, no? So, yan po, no? So, in ownership and possession, as usual, pinaka pabalik balikin ko po yung encroachment, no? Uh, encroachments are two things, no? Property rights and the property itself. The last time we discussed yung encroachment on the property itself. Yung pong kay si Jojo at si Bong, di ba? merong encroachment doon. And sabi nga natin, builder in bad faith, builder in good faith, possessor, uh, sower in bad faith, sower in good faith, tsaka yung planter in good faith and planter in bad faith. Now, we discuss different rules on that. No? And of course, yung easement problems natin, common po yung party wall at yung legal easement on the right of way. No? And sa legal easement po on the right of way, there are two kinds. No? One is for private use and one is for public use. No? So, meron tayong problem sa easement on right of way sa private use and sa public use. Alright. Now, aside from that, we have this problem on... I gusto ko isingin talaga itong rollouts na ito because uh, buying rollouts in one article that I wrote no, in a newspaper column, eh, sabi ko nga, it is the mother of all headaches. No? Ano po ba yung rollouts na yan? Uh, as much as possible, sana hindi po tayo pumasok sa rollouts. No? Not uh, either tayo yung nagbebenta as real estate service practitioner or tayo yung bibili ng rollouts. Dapat hindi po tayo mapalpak. Now, sadly, marami po tayo mga real estate practitioners engage into rollouts. No? Which uh, I find that uh, uh, mali po, no? hindi po tama. Alright, so proceeding, we are going to discuss first with respect doon sa acquisition itself. No? Okay, so on the acquisition itself, meron, oh, meron tayong mga, mga situations wherein um, we know for a fact that Uh, tatlo nga, the documents, and the transfer, and the property. We'll start with the documents. No? Now, we did not conduct due diligence on the documents. Alam po natin yan. No? Uh, very important. Alam po natin kung ano ang una natin gawin. But sometimes, uh, we are confronted with certain titles which we have to elaborately know kung ano po talaga ang dapat nating classing due diligence na gagawin when, it, when we are faced with this kind of uh, titles. No? Number one, itong uh, CLOA. And second, itong, uh, first one is the patent no? from the DNR and the other one is CLOA. So, i-enlarge ko lang po ito so that uh, makita natin. This one is a patent. No? Patent from 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 the DNR po, no? Homestead patent ito. And the other one is a uh, CLOA from the Department of Agrarian Reform. Uh, DAR. Now, um, 
Ito po ang mga agencies na ito, DNR at DAR, remember that they can issue titles. Klaro po yan ha. Hindi lang po ang LRA po ang nag-i-issue ng title kapag merong judicial decree directing the LRA to execute or to, to issue a decree and the LRA directing the Registry of Deeds to issue titles. Hindi lang po yun. Ang DNR po, meron po yan silang judicial forms. Mga orange pa yung kanilang mga forms, no? Nakatago. And these are the first uh, titles, no? Kaya nga OCT, Original Certificate of Titles. And they can issue. Pagkatapos po na-issue nila yan, let's say may patent na or meron ng award sa CLOA. Now, what they do is uh, they will give that to the registry of for purposes of recording and entry. Hindi po issue once. Kaya pag makita po ninyo, no? Dito sa baba, I, ju I just want you to understand this very well. Ha? Nakita ninyo, by authority of the president, pero sa baba, entered in the Registry of Deeds pursuant to Republic Act number no. 6657. So, entered. Pinasok lang. Hindi po sila nag-issue. Ah, nag-issue po ang DAR. Ah, klaro po. Ganon din po dito sa kabila, no? Sa visa ng kapangyari ng Pangulo ng Pilipinas, nag pirma yung penro officer pero sabi dito naman ni ng ROD nakatala sa talaan ng mga kasulatan or na entry na ito so yun po ang two uh, different things that you have to understand and aside from the DAR and the DNR isa rin pong nakakapag-issue ng title uh, is yung NCIP no meron po silang certificate of ancestral domain title or CALTI, Certificate of uh, 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 Ancestral Land Title. No? So, CADTI and CALTI. We will try to tackle that in a different uh, forum or different uh, subject kasi medyo mahaba-haba ang usapan pagdating po sa NCIP. In most cases, itong tatlo, nagkakaroon ito sila ng tiyatawag na overlapping of jurisdictions. Sabi ni Dar, covered yan. Sabi ni the DNR, hindi. Hindi uncovered kasi hindi pa yan alienable and disposable. Pero issue pa rin si DAR. Nagkakaroon sila ng problem. NCIP mas lalo. Ay, amin yan. Ancestral domain yan. Uh, part yan sa ancestral land ng mga katutubo. So, nagkaroon sila ng problem. Actually, ang daming problema dito. Yung overlapping of jurisdiction, the other one would not, not recognize the other and everything. So, ang nangyari niyan, um, nagkaroon yan sila ng joint circular on how to deal with this. Talagang nag-meeting yung tatlong agency ng government together with the LRA para po maayos, basi ayos po itong sitwasyon na ito. Okay, but we are here to discuss on these two things muna. Okay, so alam po natin, no, when we have these uh, titles, o kahit na OCT siya, naipasok po yan siya at na-enter na po sa Registry of Deeds, so ibig sabihin po, na-cover na po siya sa torrent system of title registration. Take note kapag hindi pa na enter yan at na-issue pa lang ang title, either by the DNR or by the DAR, hindi pa yan siya covered under the Torrance title system. Kaya nga, ha habang hindi pa na enter yan, meron ka pang period within which to contest, no? Uh, wherein uh, you could uh, ask for investigation para palitan ang title kay mali pagkagawa or merong nag-angkin na iba, may how show pag-award, no? So, uh, medyo malalim na yun siya aspect. But uh, at least you you should know that. No? And then, um, of course, kung meron ng napasok na sa torrent system of uh, land titling, no? registration, is that alam natin, makakakuha na tayo ng uh, certified true copy. Okay. And kailangan po natin kumuha ng mga certified true copy to, para makita po natin no? sa likod ng sa, sa ROD physical copy kung uh, meron po ba siyang uh, annotations. No? Ang dami pong annotations as I discussed, may list pendants, yung pending case, adverse claim, meron siyang uh, claimant na iba on that part uh, of that property or a portion thereof. No? May list contract, may homeowner's restrictions, etc. which we'll be discussing doon pa sa documentation and titling uh, next uh, class natin. So, now, nakakuha tayo na certified true copy kasi na enter na po doon sa libro ng Registry of Deeds at ang Registry of Deeds po kasi ang repository ng lahat ng records concerning titles and even 
unregistered lands as we discussed. Okay, so balikan po natin. Ah. Let's start here with this uh, patent, homestead patent. Now, when we see that, tapos malinis ang papel sa likod, malinis yung certified through copy, okay naman. Tapos, alam po natin na ang homestead pre-patent, agricultural pre-patent, wala na po yung provision na bawal ibenta within 5 years. Wala na po yan. No? Tinanggal na po yan ng bagong batas natin. And the moment you have this title, you could immediately sell it. So, wala na po yung 5-year provision. So, kampanya na tayo. Alam natin ganun. However, we forgot to read the totality of this uh, title. Like, especially that portion there. No? Ito po yung gusto kong basahin po natin parate dito. Because nakita po, nandyan pa rin yung 5 years prohibition. Hindi natatanggal yan, pero wala na yan siyang effect. But, kasi marami pa judicial form, alam nga namang mag-print pa sila ng bago for that. No? However, dapat basahin natin lahat because there are provisions there that are still applicable until now and that it will bind you if you are the owner of this kind of property. Okay? Kung nag-apply ka na first time uh, titling through homestead patent, karamiwan is meron po itong provisions dito. At ano ba yung mga provisions na ginamin ko? I will try to have this enlarged, no? Kinat ko para mas maklaro po. Yan. Okay? So, if you will notice dito yung, nandito pa rin yung sabi nating 5 years prohibition na hindi pwede ibenta at sa sunod na 25 years dapat pagpaalam tayo sa DNR. However, ang nakalibutan natin is that meron pang provision. Wala na yan, no? Meron pang provision on this, no? At ito po ay sasailalim din sa lahat ng mga kondisyon, mga pagtamasa ng bayan at paggamit ng iba na kinilala at itinakda ng batas, lalo na iyong mga binabanggit sa section 109, 110, 111, 112, 113, at 114 ng Batas Commonwealth 41, CA 141, Commonwealth Act 141. It's a very, very old law, and it's still uh, effective right now. Now, lima ito, no? 109, 110, 111, 12, 13, 14, Yung iba, wag na natin i-discuss but I'll discuss two very important sections kasi ito yung parati nating uh, problematic. Ito yung mga common legal conflict na hindi natin nababantayan. Alright. The first one is itong section 110. Patents or certificates issued under the provision of this act, no? Commonwealth, shall not include nor convey the title to any gold. Hindi kasama ang gold dyan. Pag may gold ka makita dyan, no? may mga minerals dyan. Silver, copper, iron, or other metals or minerals or other substances containing minerals. Guano, gums, precious stones, because this shall remain to be the property of the state. Kung meron kang uh, nalaman na may gold dyan or may oil deposit or meron silver, copper, iron, and the moment you try to harvest that, the, the, prop, the state comes in and say, Oops! you have to take over because that is ours. Or, baka mag-enter ng sharing agreement kasi amin yan. We will allow you to harvest it. We will allow you to mine it, rather. But uh, as long as may tig-usapan, pwede tayo sa small-scale mining or yung sa large-scale mining under pertinent laws and the Constitution. So, yan po, Section 110. Bantayan po natin, ha? Pero, sinasabi po, any gold. Eh, what if kung may nakita tayong Yamashita treasure dyan? Diba? Any gold daw eh. Sa kanila daw ang pagmamayari. No? So, hindi naman sinabing uh, raw na gold, no? but it's any gold. So, at least you should understand this section 110. Now, another very important one is itong section 112. Ito po yung parati nating problema when it comes to the right of way acquisition ng government at magdemantay ng bayad, no? Bakit hindi binabayaran ang ating lupa at binabayaran na ang pananim? Kasi po, may nakalagay doon, no? Sa titulo na yan is that the said land shall be further subject to a right of way not exceeding 60 meters, hindi maglampas ng 60 meters in with for public highways 
Hindi lang po public highways, railroads, irrigation ditches, aqueducts, telegraph, and telephone lines. Kasama po si Napokor dyan. At similar works no, as the government may see for quasi-public service or enterprise. Now, including po yung railroad. So, yung plano po na trend dito sa amin, eh, kung may dadaanan dyan at covered ka nitong Section 112 ang title, hindi po mababayaran ang lupa. Kundi yung mga pananim or mga bahay na itinayo lang doon. Yun. Kaya nga, improvements lang ang babayaran na because you're covered. This would answer everything, no? Now, iba po yung TCT kapag nailipat na sa inyo, galing sa OCT na ito, tapos nailipat TCT, tapos hindi na nag-carry over ang provision, ay ba po yun, babayaran na po yung lupa. Okay? But as long as this uh, uh, provision is there or has been carried over to the second title, then uh, especially if kung umbana, uh, then you will still be bound by this section 112 of the CA 141. No? And take note that uh, as the government, no, as the government or any public or quasi-public or enterprise, now take note, Yung mga quasi-public enterprise natin, uh, that would involve uh, yung mga napokor. Uh, sila naman is ano eh, quasi-public yan sila. No? Kasama na yung mining or uh, forest uh, concessionaires. No? Because we could enter into a large-scale mining with other people. So kung dadaanan tayo doon, ay hindi po mababayaran tayo. ng government. Now, bakit po kinukuha ng government na property? We know for a fact that we have this what we call uh, the power of the state to take property for public use. Kahit private ownership yan, mangingibabaw po yung public use. No? And that is, one of the powers of the state is the power of eminent domain. There are three powers, remember? Power of taxation, police power, and itong Uh, power of eminent domain. However, I would like to be clear that uh, while the government has the right to take no, property for uh, public use, belonging to a private uh, entity, whether or not mayroon siyang provision ng CA-141 or none, pwede kunin. But the government has to pay. Hindi po tama yung take then bayad. Rule is that, bayad muna bago mag-take. The problem is that, marami pong dumadaan sa gumagawa na yung mga uh, contractors. Actually, hinahar lang yun ng DPWH na deputize. And they start building a road and it will pass through you. Timing ka lang din. Hindi ka pa nakatanggap ng offer sheet. Hindi ka pa negotiate ni DPWH. Dapat, is meron mo ng bayad bago mag-taking. So, what is the rule? The rule is that you should be should receive a what we call an offer sheet. No? Under the Right of Way Act. No? Panahon pa yan ni Inoy ni Aquino yung Right of Way Act. And that uh, offer sheet would contain uh, provisions for in the government is intending to sell that prop, to buy that property. And it will be pegged at market value. And you have to respond. You have to comply these requirements. The moment you have to comply the you have complied the requirements, you'll be given or paid 50%. And up the remaining 50%, kapag pumasok na po doon sa entry sa registry of deeds. Hindi, pa, hindi na kailangan lumabas ang title, entry. Babayaran kayo. Problema, hindi na babayaran. Yung iba naman, um... nakatanggap ng offer sheet, hindi pinansin, hindi binaliwala. So, the procedure is that if, suppose, hindi nakatanggap ng offer sheet, hindi nabayaran, or ayaw paggalaw nung, nung may-ari, mag-object talaga siya, mag-harang talaga siya dun, huwag kayo dumaan dito, then the government has to now go to the courts to expropriate it. expropriation proceedings ang tao. Again, through the Solicitor General, papayal sila ng kaso to get the property. But, bago sila makapayal po, magbayad muna. Paano magbayad? Hindi mo tinanggap. Iko-consign po yan sa korte. Tawag po niyan is consignation. So, the money will be consigned to the court together 
with the petition to expropriate that particular land for purposes of public use. And sa consignation, pera po yung consign sa court. Parang yun na po is the tender of payment to the to the owner of that property. And the moment that has been consigned, pwede na po nilang idiretso yan. Hindi ka na makapag-stop. You cannot enjoin. And there is no injunction for public development. So, you have to go to court. And the court says, oh, sakutin mo na lang ito. Bakit mo ayaw pag At the same time, tanggapin mo man itong consignation money na bigay ng government sa'yo. In that particular case, and the PWH. Sabi niya, pagtingin niya, Sir, bakit zonal value na lang? Eh kasi, nung may offer sheet, market value. Pero sa batas kasi, kapag hindi ka tumanggap, ayaw mo pumayag, pagdating niyan sa korte, ang i-offer na lang, zonal value, bababa na. Which is lower. So yan. Although, uh, magkakaroon pa man din ng pre-trial, pag sumagot ka, kakausap kayo doon. Pwede pa rin pag-usapan ang presyo. No? And the moment it's done, there is no more issue about the taking because it's for public use. It's presumed for public use. The issue now is the just compensation. You bayad sa'yo. Alright? So, I hope you remember this. Ha? So, therefore, as I said, uh, the government or any public or quasi-public service or enterprise may reasonably require for carrying on their business this uh, getting of this right of way not exceeding 60 meters. No? And the damages to be paid, to sabi, is for improvements only. Improvements involves yung pananim, uh, yung mga... Uh, puno at saka yung mga structures or building na ginawa nyo doon. Okay, so at least now you are equipped with this idea when dealing with a uh, title which has a what we call uh, annotations on under Commonwealth Act number 141. Okay, that is the thing. So next is that we're going to discuss on the CLOA. Well, alam po natin na ito pong CLOA, uh, it is what we call the Certificate of Land Ownership and Award. And makita mo may number. Sa DNR po, ang tawag sa kanila patent. No? Sa CLOA po, award. Okay. So, CLOA. So, ito po. Uh, what is the reason why uh, the government can take private property for distribution to the uh, farmer beneficiaries. Alam nyo, meron tayong tiyatawag na principle on social justice wherein you have to give more laws to those who have less in life. So parang these uh, farmer beneficiaries who have been tilling the land for quite a long period of time already through their blood and sweat, hindi man lang nila maangkin ang lupa. At parati silang nagbigay doon sa asendero, maabot ng tag 50 hectares, 100 hectares ang hawak nila. And so, um, this law was passed, no? itong CARP law, para po, uh, to, under the principle of social justice in the Constitution, to implement that principle. Kasi hindi self-executory yung principle of social justice in the Constitution. You need an implementing law to implement that uh, principle of social justice. Marami po tayong batas na under the principle of social justice. Yung labor code natin, under po yan siya sa principle of social justice. Kasi uh, we have to protect the laborers dahil nga minsan naapi na mga owners or may-ari ng business, no? mga employers. No? So yan, isang example yung social security system law that is uh, under the principle of social justice, GSI, as pag-ibig. Yan po ay mga bagay. Itong isa, with respect sa lupa, marami po, no? Meron tayong law on social housing and finance corporation. Uh, meron tayong yung sa pag-ibig. At ito nga, itong sa DAR na meron tayong Award sa farmer beneficiaries. Now, if you'll notice that it has, it carries with it is a 10-year prohibition. Nandyan po yan, no? Alam natin yan, eh. even without look, looking at that uh, statement there, no? 
na may 10 years na hindi mo pwede benta. Alam po natin na ang 10 years po should be counted from the time that it was uh, awarded to you. Bawal po siya ibenta. Prohibited. Now, maraming mga magagaling at matatalino, what they do is that uh, they would like to circumvent the law. At yun namang farmer beneficiary, gusto rin niyang ibenta dahil uh, to circumvent the law. Marami po yan, no? not only the DAR, including the NCIB people, and even din sa uh, awards, uh, sa patents under the NCIP noon, yung may 5-year prohibition. Now, they want to get away with this 10 years. No? So, what they do is to uh, execute a sale. And then, later on, oh, hindi lagi kami magreklamo. Kahit na saka na lang na yan, after 10 years, may lipat. And, you know what? The Supreme Court said that is prohibited. Now, I would like to explain to you I discuss with you and make a story about a case decided by the Supreme Court about the prohibition on this kind. No? When, once it is prohibited, no, like this one, it is mandatory. Now, there was this, um, there was this case wherein the owners of the property were mga mangmang, pobre. And then, they wanted to sell this to another person. Now, actually, nang hiram pa sila ng pera, hindi na makabayad, parang bayaran na lang kita. However, it is within the statutory period na bawal. So, ang ginawa nila is that, oh, sige, hindi pa man natin magawa yan. Uh, magawa na lang kayo ng promissory that after 10 years, gawa kayo ng deed of sale sa akin. Okay. So, yun, binayaran. Tapos, promissory. The so, true enough, pag after 10 years, is that nagkaroon ng deed of sale. Oh, tapos ng 10 years, pwede na kayo magawa ng deed of sale. Ah, deed of sale. And then, after that, the process na. Bayad ng taxes, transfer fee sa local, ROD. Tapos bago sa ROD, dumaan sa DAR. Of course, ang DAR naman, titingnan nila. Oh, benta itong lupa ng beneficiary. Lampas na ba sa... Ay, lampas na pala sa 10 years. Binigyan ng dark clearance. Okay? Na pwede na ibenta. Okay. So, wala problema. Hanggang nailipat ang title doon sa buyer bagong mayari. Tumipas ang taon, ang ilang taon, namatay itong mga owners. Now, here comes the heirs. Thinking, dito na sila sabi, parang lugi si Papa at Mama, no? The, the property has been sold at a very, very low price and parang naloko talaga sila pa. Alam mo, mang mang and everything. We have to fight for that right. So, they demanded from the new owner that you have to pay us more dahil ang presyo niyan hindi tama. Ganun. Sabi naman nung mayari, hindi, akin na itong property na ito kasi tapos na eh, may sale na eh. Nalipat ko ng title. Ako na in possession ng property. Out kayo. Now, it looks hopeless, right? So, they filed a case in court questioning the sale on the ground that uh, uh, it was sold within the prohibitory period. Yun ang kanilang claim. Yun ang kanilang angkor. So, when it was filed at the regional trial court, sinagot ng owner. Oh, that there cannot be no prohibition because uh, the sale was in fact made uh, after the 10-year prohibition. But when the promise was made within the 10-year prohibition, however, the sale was made after the 10-year. In fact, sa pa nila, Meron kaming dark clearance. In the first place, hindi kami ma ng dark clearance kung hindi uh, pumasayan sa DAR. Decision ng regional trial court said, okay, tama si new owner. Dismiss ang complaint. Not satisfied, went on appeal sa Court of Appeals. Argument the same. Sabi ng Court of Appeals, tama ang RTC and tama ang owner, new owner. Because, yun nga, May dark clearance eh. At saka ang sale nangyari after the 10 years. So, there's no prohibition anymore. So, talo na naman ang mga heirs. So, what did the heirs do? It was that they went to the Supreme Court. The Court of Last Resort. Which is the highest court in the land. Tanong nila. Tapos, nasabit sila ng mga pleading stone, arguments, etc. And then, here comes the ruling. Sabi ng Supreme Court, the sale transaction made by the 
predecessor, yung parents, and the owner was Boyd. Boyd, huh? Directing that the title be cancelled and to return possession to the heirs subject to the payment of that uh, amount that they paid. The moral lang manong time. Ang reasoning ng Supreme Court was that the fact that there was a promise in within the 10th year period to sell any and all acts accomplished because of that promise is void. Why? Because that promise itself is void. So the spring cannot rise higher than the source. So ang source po is void. You promise na mag-execute siya after 10 years. Therefore, ang consequence na nangyari, the execution of the documents afterwards are also considered void ab initio. It has no effect. And the transfer of title, even if na meron pong approval by the TAR, is uh, ineffectual and therefore the title should be uh, nullified. Okay. Imagine that. So, yan po ang pinaka-importanting bagay po. Now, marami pa rin matitigas ang ulo. Sabi nila, ano lang ang gawin namin, attorney? Uh, lease contract with option to buy. Sabi ko, hindi pwede. Because there is statement of option to buy. What if attorney uh, long-term lease of 10 years? Tabala na. Or gawin na lang namin 50 years. Hindi rin pwede. Kasi ang rule or law pala ng awarded uh, land through CLOA is that any agreement that will dispossess the beneficiary of their right to till use the land is considered as part of the 10 years prohibition. Hindi mo pwedeng tanggalin ang right lang. Pwede, pwede man. Pero sila pa rin ang mag-till. But can you foreclose? No. You cannot foreclose because that is covered by the 10 year prohibition. So, wag mong tagalan ng karapatan ang owners to till on that property. Even if merong management contract or lease contract, sila na ang magpossession yung bagong nakabili or may katransak, hindi o pwede. Bawal. Yan po ang gusto kong maintindihan ninyo when it comes to the CLOA. Aside from the fact yung 10 years, no? any all documents that you execute that would somehow remove the right to till the land, hindi po pwede. And if that will be questioned later, matatalo tayo. Nakalabas ka na ng pera. Paano yan? Okay? Okay. Now, one benefit nitong CLOA ngayon, uh, under the new law, uh, passed by Congress and approved by the President, no? signed by the President, no? itong Republic Act Number no. 11953, yung New Agrarian Emancipation Act. Sabi dito, wala nang babayaran na utang sa land bank, pati interest, penalties, at surcharges. So, alam po natin yan, no? So, kung sino yung hindi nakabayad, pa, at meron pang mga penalties at surcharges, hindi pwede i-proclose. In fact, uh, condoned lahat. Now, I had this uh, discussion in one of my tutorial lectures, no? tutorial video. Uh, maybe you could like to, would like to see that in detail. No? And, Ang um, itong batas na ito no na pinirmahan nga. Tinatawag dito is a New Agrarian Emancipation Act, no? Republic Act number no. 11953. Take note that started noong unang panahon pa. Meron namang meron naman yang act noong unang panahon na uh, emancipation patent pa ang tawag nila noon eh. Uh, wherein noong panahon na ni Marcos, President Ferdinand Marcos, ang kanyang Dar Department of Agriculture Department of Agrarian Reform Secretary Mr. Estrella who happens to be the son now ni Jean Dar din ngayon ni Bongbong Marcos no parang ano no yung parang uh, naulit ang kahapon no? okay so si President Bongbong ang ang DA secretary and president tapos ang Dar si uh, Mr. Estrella 
So ito nga, Republic Act number number 6657, ito yung Carp Law of 1988, panahon ni Cory. At in-extend ito hanggang uh, 2009 through the Carp Extension Law. Yun pong taking. No? Well, right now, there is still existing because hindi pa tapos ang distribution and payment. No? Tapos tinanggal na sa kanila ngayon ang pagpapaningil sa mga farmer beneficiaries. Ang reklamo naman nila, paano kami makakabayad sa landowner? Eh, sabi ng batas, find a way. O, tangi na lang natin yan. Magawa lang tayong scheme of payment doon sa mga landowners. But we cannot demand payment anymore from the beneficiaries. To. So, happy po sila niyan. Alright. So, ito yung mga beneficiaries natin. No? Okay. Uh, dati kasi, uh, hindi yun free. Ngayon po, free na. No? Wala na babayaran pag maisuan ka. Tapos, um, under this uh, New Agrarian Emancipation Act, no? Republic Act number 11953, sinabi kang free. Kasi before that, sa, sa CARP law, no? ito po yung law, section 11, na inamendahan ng extension law, payment by beneficiaries, shall be paid for by the beneficiaries to the Land Bank of the Philippines in 30 annual in amortization at 6% interest per annum. Yan po ang babayaran. No? So imagine, 30 years at 6% per annum. At pag hindi ka makabayad, may default ka, pwede pong ma-foreclose. In fact, marami pong foreclose, no? At nandun pa sa period to redeem, so nakondone sila. May nawala ang foreclosure, nakuha nila yung property. So, this particular section is no longer applicable with the enactment of the Republic Act number 11953. So, yan. Happy-happy sila, ma'am and sir. So, an sabi nga dito sa news, no? Ano ba ang mga, nabatas to? Ano, ano ba ang mga mga benefits under this new Republic Act 11953. Number one, lahat ng loans, condone, interest penalties. And then, nagsimula sa PD27, ito po yung presidential decree ni President Ferdinand Marcos. And then, naamendahan ng Republic Act 6657 ni Cory at na-extend Republic Act 9700 which amended some provisions there. Condone, ha? Ibig sabihin, wala na. Condonation. Second, it prudent the credit facilities and support services for farmers. Bakit po? Kasi, uh, itong mga ARBs, no, pinasok nila sa, sa registry system ng basic sectors with a DA. Take note, ang DA, Department of Agriculture, and Department of Agrarian Reform are two different uh, departments, no? They have two different secretaries there. Now, sabi ng batas sa Republic Act number 11953, yung mga ARBs, i-integrate na sila sa Department of Agricultural sa system nila, registry system, para mabigyan po sila ng credit facilities, pautang, at support services for farmers. Take note that the Department of Agriculture are supporting the farmers. No, Before this law, sila po yung nagbibigay ng pautang doon sa mga farmers. Let's say, sa mga palayan, bibigay sila ng uh, pautang sila sa sa pesticides, sa mga pananim, mga gagasusin, di ba? Ganyan man yan. And marami, government agent, iniya, nagpapautang sila ng tubig, patubig, di ba? Ganon. So now, they are now part of the registry system for basic sectors with the DEA, no? So, credit facilities and support services for farmers. Yung mga trainings, paano maglago at gumanda ang mga, mga pananim. Okay. The, they could ask support now from the DA. And the most important po is that it is now exempted in the payment of estate tax. So, kapag ang beneficiary po ay namatay at that meron siyang CLOA title at itatransmit niya yung uh, property doon sa kanyang mga heirs. 
the privilege of transmitting the property to the heirs is what we call uh it's what we are being taxed what they are being taxed the decedents that privilege no? and that tax is called the estate tax pero kapag kloa po yung property nyo at namatay po at ita transfer sa heirs exempted sa payment of the estate tax now sabihin mo ngayon so attorney hindi na namin isasali sa AGS no isasali nyo sa extrajudicial settlement Kasi hindi ka may issue ng e-card yan. Isabi niyo, sir, hindi naman ako bayad ng estate tax. That's correct. Pero isali niyo and get what we call a certificate of exemption from the BIR citing this law. So, isasali pa rin yan siya. And it will be part of those who will be stated sa e-card. Kaya lang, exempted siya. Hindi siya itatax. Kasi, once you have that e-card, pag pinasa mo yan sa registry of deeds together with the payment of the transfer fee, malilipat ang titulo po sa mga heirs. Okay? Kasi one of the requirements in order to transfer the title uh, by way of exigent settlement, yung ICAR ng estate ng decedent. And of course, the transfer fee or the tax on transfer of real property, which does that include any condonation? Ha? Which does that is, are, is that also included in the exemption Uh, the extension ng estate tax amnesty. You have to pay for that transfer fee. Okay, take note of that. So, let us proceed with the discussion on acquisition. Tapos na tayo dun sa documents. Yun mga important things lang i-discuss. Yung others, uh, medyo biasa na kayo doon because we have discussed that already. And we will come back in detail again during sa documents and titling para hindi po natin makalimutan. So, we now go to the transferor. Ang problema po kasi, yung transferor nag-transmit ng property papunta sa inyo either through mana or through donation or sale, eh wala tayo nag-conduct ng due diligence. No? So, yan pong transferor, which sabi ko nga, may either be the seller or maybe the donor, we have to conduct due diligence. Sino ba yan sila? Okay. Bakit kailangan importante malaman si seller? Well, importante malaman si seller kasi baka, number one, single siya sa title, pero in reality, married siya ngayon. Now, they are covered under the regime of absolute community property. So, kahit po single siya sa title, kailangan po natin ng marital consent. Eh, hindi na kumuha ng marital consent kasi single man. Pinayagan mo rin na single siya doon. And then, later on, pag na-transfer ng title sa'yo, reklamo yung, may, uh, yung asawa na hindi ako may, wala, wala akong marital consent, void at transaction. You can question that. Then you will feign ignorance by saying, hindi ko man alam, akala ko single siya. That is not an excuse for a void transaction. There is no such thing as good faith and bad faith in buying a property that the transaction was made through a void document because void yun siya, because walang pirma ng uh, the other spouse. Okay? You know, a classic example when it comes to seller, no? Or, the seller may be uh, um, the heirs. Kaya yung sabi ko sa inyo, hindi nyo nin, inalam lahat ang mga heirs. E meron palang omitted heir. Isa hindi nakapirma. Patay tayo dyan. Eh, that can still be questioned, no? And it operates as a lien on that property that any omitted heir or even unpaid creditor may question it later on. Masisira ang transaction mo. Or, ito ang classic example wherein meron akong situation that one of the sellers happens to be the heirs, no? Happens to be a minor. Sabi niya, hindi ko na isali yan, sir. Hindi pwede. Ay, sige sir, ako lang magpirma sa kanya for in behalf of the minor. Sabi ko, no. Ang, as a, as a mother, mother kasi yun eh, ang iyong, meron lang sa bata as a natural guardian is to take care of the kid, no? Your custody, ikaw mag-decide sa kanya, sa mag-school and everything. That's it. 
However, when it comes to property, you have to get a court order and you have to post a bond. Meron po siyang share dyan sa property na yan. And therefore, you have to secure a court order. Okay? Now, hindi ka nag-secure ng court order. Tapos na karoon ng transaction. You know, it is a void transaction and it is imprescriptible and therefore, the minor later on becomes of legal age, ma-realize siya, can question the sale and can get back and avoid the transaction so that makuha niya yung share niya sa property. Di ba? Medyo gumulo ang ating problema. So, ang dami po, no? Ang issue sa sellers, uh, married sa foreigner, tapos, or let's say, married nga sila, namatay ang Filipina. Now, will the foreigner inherit a portion of the property? Uh, yung mga ganong things, no? We'll discuss that in detail sa next topic natin. Sa donor naman, we make sure kasi na ang donor would have sufficient property left, no? Bago po niya i-donate sa, uh, sa isang anak and everything. Kasi, hindi pwede maapektahan yung legitim na tiyatawag. No? Reserve yan po no? sa uh, mga heirs. No? Hindi po pwedeng ibigay niya ang isang property sa isang tao lamang. No? Without reserving sufficient property to protect the legitims of the other heirs. Okay, now we go now to the no due diligence on the, on the property. Bakit walang due diligence sa property? Ewan ko. Gaya ng discussion natin the last time, hindi natin yan. Tinan mo ito. Sa back portion ito ng property, tiningnan niya sa harapan lang. Meron palang mga informal settlers sa likod. Dahil dyan lang siya sa harapan. Ayaw ko magpunta doon. Baka may mga ahas. <laughs> hindi chinek. Yan. So, di ba? Ito yung example the last time. Okay. And if you will see that uh, they, for example, they, they purchase a property here. Ito, ito. Yan, ito yung example natin. Then you have to conduct, uh, yung tawag natin, uh, inspection. No? Tapos pag makita mong dikit-dikit sila, yung eh, remedy natin is to get a, a, a genetic engineer to determine the possibility of encroachment. Ito yung example, no? Ang property na bibiliin mo, yung B, eh, merong naka-encroach. Now, how would you know kung may encroachment? Eh, kailangan natin ng judetic engineer. License, competent, judetic engineer. Okay? So, take thought po yan, no? Huwag po natin kalimutan na we really have to conduct ocular inspection. Okay. Another, the last problem on acquisition is the documentation problem. Now, of course, sa documentation and titling, I will go into details yung tatlo ang i-discuss ko doon. Deed of sale, um, deed of sale, deed of donation, at saka yung pasalo transaction, yung deed of sale with assumption mortgage. No, kasi very important po yung pasalo. Marami pong na Nasa semplang dyan sa pasulo na yun. And I will also include the extrajudicial settlement of estate in the documentation and titling lecture natin. But what I'm going to discuss right now in advance, itong sa documentation problem, is itong sa notary public. Balik-balik po ako kasi na kailangan po, legit po tayo na notary public. Marami po naglilipanan, naglilipana na Notary Public, ganito lang po yung stamp nila. Ito, Attorney Juan de la Cruz, Notary Public for Quezon City until December 31, 2023. PTR number, yan. Mali po yan. Hindi po yan, tama. Malamang is that that particular Notary Public is uh, not existing or kung existing man, fake yan. Meron nagpapasabi na siya is si Juan, Attorney Juan de la Cruz. Bakit po? Ang tama po ha, ito po ang gusto ko niyong tandaan ha. And if you have a cell phone, you could screenshot this in advance. No? Ito po ang dapat. Ang dami po nakalagay. Sabi ko the last meeting natin, Roll of Attorney's number 52355. Big sabihin, ika 52,355 na abogado siya sa buong Pilipinas. May MCLE compliance number. Number 7 na po kami ngayon. Mandatory Continuing Legal Education. Okay? 
Ibig sabihin, nag attend kami ng seminars para po ma-update Without which we could not practice law and even notarize. Bawal. IBPOR should be updated every year. We have to pay. Although on my part, I paid uh, one time, uh, lifetime member po ako. Okay. PTR number. Ano ba PTR? Professional Tax Receipt Number. Just like doon sa other professions here, kay Michelle, CPA, kailangan po ng PTR. Okay. Notary public for Davao City until 12-31-2024. Okay. Now, may Notarial Commission Number 2023. Yung Notarial Commission Number po dyan na nakalagay, okay. e, palaking po po, no? 076-2025. Yan po, eh, binibigay po yan ng executive judge ng clerk of court where the where your commission has been issued, where uh, the executive judge has jurisdiction over you as a notary. Maghihiring po kami niyan. Magpapayal po kami ng petition. Aharap po kami sa judge. At Titingin na ng judge kung qualified kami, kung meron ba kaming moral torpitude, meron ba kaming good moral character, NBI namin, sakto ba, and everything. Meron ba kaming police clearance. Lahat po ng clearances ipapakita namin. Certificate of good moral standing from the IBP and from the Supreme Court. Tapos dapat wala kaming kaso para mag-grad kami. Otherwise, kung meron kami, i-deny po ang application namin. So, ibig sabihin, hindi mandatory na kapag abogado ka, automatic notary public ka, ha? You have to apply for it. Kaya may ibang mga lawyers, ayaw nila mag-apply. Okay lang man. Merong iba, nagno-notaryo. Okay? May iba, hindi nagno-notaryo. Okay lang yan siya. Okay, but only lawyers can become notary public. There can be no other uh, person that could become a notary public except for a lawyer po, no? who could charge for a fee. Okay. So, yan po, no? And minsan nga, sa hearing, kakatuwa kasi ang mga ito mga judge, minsan pinaparecite pa sa amin yung code of ethics, yung code, <laughs> yung notarial rules, kung alam ba namin. And we have to answer it. Otherwise, uh, we will be denied. Okay? Talaga tinitest kung alam namin ang ginagawa namin. And kasi, marami na po talagang mga pronouncement ng Supreme Courts ngayon. Regarding this uh, notarista. Meron nga ning isa sa, I think sa Pasay ato, nilaunch nila yung honesto. Honesto notaryo. Uh, kumbaga, they are trying now to change the system of these notaries na dapat po ma-eradicate namin yung mga fake notaries. Yung mga non-complying notaries, everybody must comply. Including with the tarifa on how to 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 bill no with respect to the payment and uh, preparation of the document okay so take note of the take note iba po yung notarial fee iba rin po yung professional fee sa pagprepare ng document because you may have a document notarized for us na prepared nyo na eh mas mura yon okay kasi hindi naman kami ang nagprepare and we are required to put our address. De La Cruz and Partners Law Firm, second floor Cruz Building. And my address po, 1111, Gladiola Street, Kilometer 5, Buhangin, Dabao City. And required po, nailagay namin ang telephone number plus email. Without which, pag hindi makomply yan, pwede po kaming ma-suspend ma sa aming practice. Bawal po. Kailangan yan, details niyan nakalagay yan. Correct? So, how to determine a legitimate notary public? Simply lang naman. Yung pinaka number one is that you have to go to the... If you want, no? Kung legitimate siya, mingi ka na certification dun sa OCC kung not na issue ba ito na notarial commission. And there is the OCC, the Office of the Clerk of Court, will issue that this person, attorney Juan de la Cruz, was issued a commission for two years under commission number 2023-076-2025. Effective at release date under December 31, 2024. Okay. So, yan po ah. Huwag niyo pong kalimutan, please. No? Now, I want to discuss to you ito pong parati mong binabiolate po natin. Itong yatawag nating personal 
appearance rule. Now, we'll notice on the picture is that dapat na dyan ang buyer, na dyan ang seller, at yung husband ng seller. Everybody must appear before the notary public. Lahat po sila. Now, it is a mandate, it is a directive to us, no? Pag, especially kapag may transmission of rights, like sale, donation, extrajudicial settlement, waiver, and any kind of of all transmission of like even lease contract because somehow you part uh, you you give away some of your rights for another person to hold to do yang use of right. things like that it should have a personal appearance no but as a rule lahat po dapat ng notaryo namin may personal appearance po dapat sa amin okay now and once mag-appear po yan siya we will be uh, trying to ascertain on whether or not that persons, these persons who who want to execute this particular, let's say, deed of sale, knows what they are transacting. Ang una titingnan namin yan, yung mental faculties ng tao. Sasabihin ko, naintindihan po nyo itong ano? Uh, naintindihan po nyo itong pinipirmahan ninyo? Uh, ito po yung deed of sale, binibenta nyo sa halagang ganito? Okay po ba? Yes, yeah, sir, okay po yan. Oh. Ganyan, no? Now, another thing that we require while in our presence, okay, is that they have to sign the notarial book. Ito po yung notarial book rule, no? Signature on the notarial Ito po ang itsura ng libro namin. Blue ang color niya. Yan po ang, yan po talaga ang itsura. Actual, no? And kung i-open po natin siya, ito po ang laman sa loob, na nakalagay dyan, yung mga classic-classing transactions wherein uh, nandiyan yung names, kinds of uh, kind of transaction, uh, yung magkano binayad, anong classing document, lahat po nakailagay dyan. And in that particular uh, scenario po, no, is that nilalagay namin ang document number. Katulad dito, doc number 12. Tapos, anong classing document? DOAS, Deed of Absolute Sale, Tapos sa pangalan ng party, si J. Uy. Ito sa example ko. Tapos, pipirma siya sa libro. Okay? Tapos, si Irene Cruz, yung isang party, pipirma rin sa libro. Okay? Pati mga witnesses. Okay? And then, uh, the witnesses must sign also on the book. Adalawa, no? Tapos, we will be requiring them the valid identification. Bakit po importante yung valid identification? Because the rule on notarial law is that this valid or competent evidence of identities are important for us to identify that the people who are signing in front of us are the same persons who actually executed the document. Paano namin malaman? Hindi ka namin kilala. So, titingnan namin yung ID. Check ko, ikaw ba talaga ito? Diba? And they present the ID, we photocopy it, or sometimes kami ang nag-prepare ng document, in-scan ko na, ina-attach ko na po sa document itself. Yan po ang requirement. Okay? Now, ano po ba ang mga valid identifications allowed under the law? So, I think alam niya, no, yung tinatawag nating competent evidence of identity. Alright. So, these are the different kinds, no? Okay. Now, with that, I will try to let us see daw kung magtanong ako dito sa inyo kung sino ang kakakalam nito. Hmm. So, I will call, ha? So, is Elise Obis, right? Nakikinig ba si Elise? Elise? Ayan. Malaman natin kung nakikinig sila o wala or absent o hindi. Take note po natin sila ha. Pag hindi sumagot sa akin, testing lang ito. Si Elise Obis, absent. Si MC Lasala Jose, absent. Si April Montoya, wala rin. Si Kim Lumuntad, wala din. Melissa Hernandez, wala. 
Felix Guerrero. Ayan, Melissa Hernandez. Salamat. Now, Melissa, question number one. Comelec ID, is it a valid identification? Valid po. Valid. Okay, very good. How about um, PhilHealth ID? Valid po. Okay, let us see. Oh, it is not a valid identification po. Hindi po siya valid identification until now sa amin, sa rules o notarial practice namin kasi it is not um, a valid competent evidence of identity. Meron kaming mga listahan. So, this is alam ninyo, ha? Okay. Then, I'll ask Tina Marcos. Ah, sige, si Elise. Nandito si Elise. Elise, how about itong postal ID, Elise? Is this a valid ID, Elise? Yang postal ID, is it a valid identification? Oh, valid or hindi valid? Okay. How about the PRC ID? Okay. Very good. Valid talaga yan, no? How about itong humid ID? Itong sa left side. Humid ID, ma'am. Elise. Wala si Ma'am Elise. Ah, bali din. Okay, okay, okay. So, I'll get, I will ask another one. Si Shoni Dalangin, nandyan ba siya? Wala si Shoni. Hindi, ganito lang pala ang style maghuli, no? Kung nakikinig o hindi. Or nandito. Si MC Lasala Jose. Ayan, si Shoni. Shoni, itong driver's license. Valid identification, hindi. Yang driver's license sa monitor natin. Okay. Itong integrated bar of the Philippines. Okay, Sara Duterte pa ito. Ito, ito. Hindi yan siya valid ID. Ito, ito. Integrated bar of the Philippines ni Sara Duterte. Ika 50,000, 52,676 siya na lawyer. Hindi po ito siya valid, ma'am. This is not valid, no? Uh, invalid po siya. And ito pong postal ID, this is valid. Ah, ito. How about itong PWD na ito po? PWD. Hindi po, kasi bata pa yan, no? Tinan mo, baby pa man yan, may learning disability. Pero kung matanda na, valid yan siya. Okay, so dahil bata yan siya, invalid po. Uh, ito, ito po. Ito pong ID po sa school ID, University of Philippines, Manila. Invalid, correct. O FDB ID card, valid. And yung senior citizen, valid po yan siya. Okay, thank you po mama. Thank you for participating. Alright, so, I we said that, yun ang mga valid, some of the, most of the valid identifications that we are uh, allowed no, to to use as a competent evidence of identity sa aming notarial practice. Alright, sige. So, what are the effects of defective notarization? Now, ito po, meron ng Supreme Court case na nagsasabi dito na ano ang effect ng document itself. However, with respect to the person first or the notary who uh, notarize incorrectly, ito po, suspension from the practice of profession of that lawyer and notary public or pinaka-severe po pag talagang klaro, lalo na pag yung patay na bubuhay, Dahil dyan, tapos nagkakaroon ng, ng transmission of rights to another person at nagkalipat-lipatan, tapos nawalan na talaga ng property, ano? Possible po tayo ma-disbard. And, ang document itself po, no? Na sabi natin kapag 
properly notarized po, it becomes a public instrument. No more kapag defective po ang notarization, especially kapag wala, walang personal appearance, hindi na po siya public instrument. Although, it will still be categorized as a private instrument. Now, problema, kung deed of sale meron ka, wala mang problema. Kasi, kung hindi siya maging public instrument, it still becomes a private instrument. At alam po natin, kapag sale po, on any other form, magawin yan siya. Pwede nga, sa piece of paper lang, di ba? Sulat kamay. Barangay kasulatan, pwede nga, di ba? So, wala tayong problema pag private, maging private suit. Ang problema natin, e eh, ito. Kung deed of sale, no? Paano kung deed of donation? Yan ang problema natin. Kapag deed of donation po siya, ang requirement po ng deed of donation, does, it, does, it must be in writing. It must be accepted by the donor. Yung pong bibigyan is dapat siya tanggapin. Nobody can force somebody to accept something kahit to donate sa kanya kung ayaw niya. And third, it must be in public instrument. E paano kung defective pagkapirma? It will become now a private instrument. And therefore, not a public instrument. That deed of donation is considered as void. Yun po ang pinag-usapan sa case na Supreme Court case na nabasa ko. It became void because of that. Right? So, careful po tayo when it comes to these uh, particular instances. No? Because, uh, konting mali lang natin, yun ang effect. Kasi ang nangyari dito, yung nag-donate kasi, patay na, eh kung naging void siya, hindi na maulit Hindi na siya makagawa ng deed of donation, right? Kasi sa atas, ang pronouncement is private instrument na siya. Okay, so, take note of that. Okay, so, proceeding sa common legal conflicts in real estate transactions. No? So, we have already finished uh, ito pong acquisition. Next topic would be itong ownership and possession. And I believe that uh, we have ilan ang oras natin. It's 9.42 and we have 15 minutes. Okay, I will see if I could kung mapuputol kasi ang discussion. Wait ha. Mahaba ba ba itong next topic ko? O medyo mahaba nga pa itong next topic ko? I think I can finish this one today. So I will I can finish this in 15 minutes. So I will proceed. Okay. So ngayon pag-usapan natin itong ownership and possession. Uh, the usual problems or legal conflicts in ownership and possession na tayo. Okay, let's proceed. So na-discuss ko na sa inyo yung bubong, no? Wherein, meron pong encroachment. Eh, klaro po yan. No? Pwede natin i-abate yan. Meron po. Plus damages, no? Hindi man pwede mag-encroach on the property. Yan ang encounter natin during the time that we are the owner already of the property. Or kahit at first, wala pa yan. Tapos later on, dahan-dahan, nangyari ng ganyan, no? Taka ka na lang, buwapasok ang tubig sa'yo. So, it is considered as an encroachment on the property rights. Ano ba yung right mo? Ang right mo po na hindi ka magbanggambala dyan area na yan at hindi pumasok ang tubig. At yung right din po ninyo na hindi gamitin ang party wall para uh, patungan ng, ng gutter. And you could have that removed. No? Okay? Pwede yan po itanggalin. Now, on encroachment of property rights and property itself, Number one problem din natin is yung wala ang gutter. Yung kanina may gutter. Ito, hindi siya gawa ng gutter. Na problema, nakalampas po siya doon sa property or boundary ng kabila. Pero yung kapag malakas ang ulan, ang tubig po pumapasok sa kabila. And tinatamaan ang salamin nila or ang jealousy windows, pumapasok ang tubig sa loob ng bahay ng kabilang. So, yan ang usual na paraan ng uh, pag-aaway. Kaya ang ginawa nung isa, dahil ayaw man tanggalin, 
Eh yun, ginawang paraan ay eh, nagsahod siya. Problema lang, nung nakita na may uh, sahod na, ba tinanggal din at in repair ang kanyang gutter. So, these are considered as an encroachment. No? Marami pa pong mga ownership issues like, for example, itong nangyari na ito, may natumba, natumbahan ka ng kahoy dyan sa inyong lugar, kapitbahay na, na puno, sira ang bago mong pick up. E sana, nung nakatilt pa siya, papunta sa'yo, ni-request mo na napaputol. Kasi, uh, falling tree, it, the danger of fall. Kasi kung isang hampas lang ng hangin yan at ang bagyo, lakas na ulan, pwede po papunta sa'yo. So, you could demand that this be cut. No? Kung hindi niya itanggal, then you could go to the government authorities, DNR, para mapaputol po yan. In fact, yung mga makita natin sa yung mga puno natin na nakadikit na doon sa mga wires na mga sa ating kuryente, Mag po tayo magputol niya, no? baka makuryente tayo. So, we can ask the the utility electric utility company to cut it for us. Diyan po yung mga klaseng bagay na dapat ating remember. Now, meron pang iba. Katulad dito, this is a clear case of encroachment daw ng leaves, no? Doon sa kabila. Well, eh, ginawa mo, Ayaw mo talaga siya, kahit anong demand mo, ayaw talaga tanggalin. Kaya gusto mo walang magpasok ng mga leaves sa'yo, mga dahon doon sa lugar mo. Eh, yun, pinutol mo. Away tuloy kayo. At anong nangyari, ah, ganyan anong nangyari, no? So, you cannot actually cut it by your own. Basta leaves po, you could demand that it will be removed. First demand, no? Kung ayaw pa rin, despite the demand, then you could now go to court and get a court order para ipaputol po yun. Or, para dahil it's it's uh, encroaching on your property rights. No? Okay. Pero pag ugat po, ayan, pwede na po nating putulit diretsyo. Wala na pong demand. Kailangan. Okay. Now, kung meron po tayong puno ng, uh, for example, ito, puno ng saging, at merong naka kita natin na pumasok sa loob wag po nating kunin yan hindi po yan atin dahil kung kunin natin yan uh, we are considered as magdanakaw magkakaroon ka ng kaso ng theft bawal po yan paano po at kailan maging atin yung property yung saging na yan antayin po nating mahulog sa lupa pag nahulog na atin na yun Now, kung ayaw mo yung ganyang nangyayari dahil hindi mo pala magiging iyo, you could demand that it be cut off from the owner. Okay? So, meron tayong mga preventative measures para mawala itong klaseng mga problema na ito. Okay, ano po yung mga preventative measures or preventions? Now, if this is the boundary, itong gumagalaw sa right side, And pag ang tinanim po is malaking puno, itatanim pa lang, ha? Itatanim pa lang. Kung ngayari, nagtatanim yung kapitbahay nyo. Uh, mare, ano ba yung tiyatanim mo? Ay, nagtatanim po ako ng baliti para ma maluwang nito. Eh, mare, yan ba eh, nasa 2 meters ba? Ang, ang ano yan, ang distance. Kasi sa batas po natin, 2 meters. So, at least na-prevent yung situation. Ah, ganun ba? Oh, yes. Kailangan po mag-ano kayo ng 2 meters. Doon po kayo makastart magtanim. Okay? Now, kung mga maliit na shrubs or small plants like this one, ang sabi po ng batas is 50 centimeters po. Okay? Right? And then, um, yan lang kung kaibigan kayo. Paano kung hindi kay kaibigan at you need to, you need to, to know what they are doing always. Well, hindi mo nabantayan. Dahil siyempre, may trabaho rin tayo, busy tayo. E naigawa nila yun. Ang nakita mo na ganun ang tinanim at nakatabi doon sa inyong party wall. So, mangyari niyan, under Article 679, ang karapatan po natin is 
uh, may demand po natin na yung mga tanim na yon at plant na at shorter distance pwede pong i-approve bunutin okay kasama na rin po yung mga tanim na nagagrow spontaneously ano ba yung nagagrow spontaneously without intervention of man katulad ng malunggay bigla lang magtubo pag ayaw mo na sa tabi mo pwede mo ipa-approve okay so yan ang right po no so what else what other problems do we see sa party wall naman um ang batayan lang po natin dito is that uh, yung pag-maintain nitong party wall. Kasi meron talagang mga properties na merong party wall tapos ginagawang wall po. No? Alam po yan yung duplex. So, siyempre, kung if you are on the other side of that uh, duplex, eh, huwag nyo namang huwag nyo namang gawing area niya ng inyong inyong uh, tulugan dahil pag maingay baka magpalag kayo. So, gawin niyo na yung siyang area let's say ng sala pero wag naman masyado may you have to respect no the privacy of our neighbor kasi yung party wall na yan sharing yan eh. May party wall, may party fence pagkatapos ang maintenance niyan is hati kayo. So, kung may masira, magambag-ambag kayo paggamit. Alamin po ninyo ang karapatan kapag may party wall. Nobody can make a uh, butas no. O hole ng party wall para masilip po kung ginagawa ng kapitbahay. Kung makita mo kung anong niluluto niya, anong ginagawa. Diba? Hindi po pwede. Bawal po yan. Remember the rules on party wall. And then, ang iba naman, hindi na nakadikit. Malayo ang wall nila. Pero, wala namang tinanim. Ang ginawa naman ito, ginagawang sampayan at nasarapan mo yung sinampay. Now, Everybody must in the exercise of the right act with justice. No? And that can be abated no? under the principles of civil code natin on uh, human relations. No? Huwag po ganitin gawin. Eh, parang nangiinis naman tayo. Pati yung mga trapo, mga tuwalya, dyan nakaharap sa kabilang bakod. Hindi po pwede. Okay? That is not allowed. Alright, so we go on the easement problems. No? Ito yung tatawag nating legal easements of right of way. Right of way! Well, this is the right of way wherein we pass through every day. And that right of way later on was uh, closed. Tinabi dito, no trespassing na. Ayaw na niya padaanin. Ang iba nga, talagang nilalagyan ng barbed wire or gate. Hindi ka na padaan. So, Paano ka bang makahingi ng right of way? And bakit ka may right to ask for a right of way? Kasi it is a kind of legal easement po, sinasabi ng batas. It is easement by necessity, kaya kailangan eh. And ang batas po ang gumawa nito para sa either for public use or for the interest of private person. So ito po ay legal na pasanin o pabigat na itatag ng batas na ang layunin o hangarin ay para pampublikong gamit or pribadong gamit ito. So, uh, if you are trapped, no? let's say, ito po yung mga estates or mga properties within, and you are in the middle, you are called the dominant estate. Tapos yung mga green po, ang tawag niyan, servant estate. They serve upon your pleasure as a dominant estate, wherein you could request for a right of way. But there are certain rules. No? First is that it is not free. May babayaran po tayo. Babayaran po natin yung burden na ipapasa po natin doon sa may-ari na servant estate. Dahil gagamitin, mababawasan ang property niya. Second, it must be at least nearest to the uh, national highways. No? It's not for your convenience, but for the nearest to the public highway and must be least prejudicial. Least prejudicial to the servant estate. So, kung nyari ito, situation ang pinaka least prejudicial at pinakamalamit sa highway is itong area na ito. Yan po ang pwede mong hingiin na right of way. But, ano po ba ito? Hingi? Libre? Well, you could ask for right of way but it is not free. May bayad po yan. Ide-determine po ang market value niyan ng property na yan. Hindi yan magiging isa yo, but you have to pay for that 
usage of that right of way. Okay? Tapos, meron tayong public easement of right of way. So, alam po natin ito mga right of way. Uh, katulad dito, ito yung bypass roads. No? Uh, we're in, um, pag covered ka sa OCT, yung property nyo under CA 141, babayaran na sa inyo is ang improvements. Ito na putol na mapuno dito, yun lang babayaran ng DBWH. And of course, yung meron tayong legal easement on river na kapag may river po, remember natin, and ito yung river ha. Yung area na ito, land formation ito, yan yung accretion. No? Pwede nga applyan ng title eh. By the riparian owner. Okay, kanya yan. However, it must be subject to illegal easement. Yan. Ibig sabihin, legal easement, hindi mo pwedeng maging iyo. Magsukat mo na tayo ng haba ng legal easement under the law. Tapos, after that legal easement, pwede ka na po mag-apply uh, no, ng property. So, kailangan nyo ng genetic engineer is a surveillance. Ano? So, ano ang mga requirements ng legal easement? Okay, ito po ang requirement. Under DAO 2020 One, by the Department of Environment, Natural Resources and Guidelines, pag urban po yung property, 5 meters ang distansya. Pag agri, 20 meters. Pag forest land, no? 40 meters. Now, problema, karamihan sa DNR, ginagawa nila yung sa CA 141, 4 meters, 40 meters ang ginagawa nila, which I believe is correct. Dahil with this DAO, 2021-07, yun dapat ang masunod, no? So, yun ang layo before ka makapag-apply. Eastman. Tapos, the highest watermark ng, ng river po yan siya ibibase. Hindi po yun sa dulo ha. The highest water level kung in unregular circumstances. Okay. So, urban 5 meters, agri 20 meters, and forest land 40 meters. Okay. Now, Commonwealth Act 40 meters. So, which is which? Depende na lang. Now, meron ding situation wherein beachfront property. Sa inyo ba lahat yung beachfront na yun? Did you know that uh, you do not own that beachfront? No. And meron din pong legal easement under the law. Okay, let's discuss that yung beachfront na yan. Legal easement. No? So, ito po yung legal easement, no? If you are going to sell that property, you're the real estate service practitioner. You have to determine that ito lang yung boundary line ng magmamayari. And there is an easement no, on that portion papunta doon. And these are called legal easements. Now, these legal easements, how many meters? Unang tanong natin. Saan po ito magsisimula? Where will it start? And where will it end? Saan po siya mag-end? And bakit meron pong legal easement na ganito? Tanungin, sagutin muna natin ang bakit. Okay. Bakit po? Dahil meron tayong tinatawag na salvage zone. O, salvage, ang salvage po na alam natin sa Pilipinas, pag salvage, pinapatay po, hindi po. Salvage is for purpose of rescue. Kung sakali pong merong barko na merong malunod na barko or masiraan dyan, Yang area na po na for salvage zone, pwede po siyang gamitin for rescue and retrieval operation. Kaya kailangan po, no? Gaano ka taas po ang legal easement? Now, for forest land, 40 meters. Tapos, including yung national parks and protected areas, ha? And kung agricultural, 20 meters, yun po ang difference. Ang usual is that, wala namang masyadong forest land taming dagat, is that mostly agricultural, 20 meters po. Paano po natin i-determine ang 20 meters, no? Okay, so we will discuss the, the from where it will start and where it will end. Okay. So, in easement of salvage zone, ang basis niyan, Measured landward po papasok. Gari sa dagat, papasok. Uh, from the mean high water line or interior limit. Ano ibig sabihin ng mean high water? Simple lang po yan. 
yan po yung high tide yung average height, height na na determine kung may high tide na no? over specific period okay tapos kung interior limit kung yung merong natural uh, artificial marker so for example dito po no so kung if this is the property uh, and you own that frontage if you will notice here na ito po yung mean low tide at yung mean high tide no? So, ang tanong po, saan po magsisimula ang counting ng 20 meters or 40 meters the case may be. So, ang counting po niyan from the mean high tide, okay? Which, um, that would come in landward, no? papasok, no? Now, question is that, if it is landward, the question is that, uh, if it is the high tide, yan ba ang basihan? And the answer is yes. Yan po magsimula magbilang tayo ng 20 meters. Hindi po doon sa low tide. Okay. So, if that is the property, tingnan nyo, ginawa ko. Bibilang tayo ng 20 meters. Yan po ang spent of salvage zone. Na hindi po maging, pwedeng maging subject for commerce of man. Magiging inyo. Bawal po yan siya. And it, after that, will be the private property. Yan ang pwedeng maging subject of the commerce of man. Now, anong gagawin natin sa salvage zone? Hindi naman parati meron na galubog na barko dyan, sir. Eh, paano naman, sir, kung pwede ba namin gamitin na yung salvage zone? And the answer is yes, actually you could apply for a for sure lease. Ayan. For sure lease application sa DNR, the type of application covering for sure lands, and it is 25 years, and renewable for another 25. Kaya mga beach friends natin, meron silang for sure lease agreement with TDENR. But when you are granted with that for sure lease, kailangan po merong Protection on the environment, pagtanim ka ng mangroves, etc. Et Maraming conditions. No? Okay? So, take note of that. Now, ano naman yung interior limit? Isang marker po. Ito po yung artificial marker, no? Na pwede nating Kung dyan po, may, na, may marker po na ganyan, eh pwede po ninyong sukatin. Dyan po sukatin, papasok landward. Hindi na po yung high tide, low tide. Dyan po ang bilang ng ng 20 meters or 40 meters. Alright? And finally, ang last topic would be the yung scam nga ba ang rollouts for sale. So I made a video tutorial on that, lecture on that. Uh, ito po yung ano niya, scam nga ba ang rollouts for sale data data logan. And actually, prohibited po yan under PD 957 because um, there is uh, no license to sell. Ang main reason na pinaprotekta niyan is because the people there, the load selling, it cannot give drainage, it cannot give a provision for uh, sad, the dadyong utility. Tapos sometimes nasa hazard zone, agricultural pa ang area. Nasa middle pa ng, ng parang dominant estate pa, walang right of way. No? And agricultural ang purpose. Hindi mabibigay ang title because Pag meron mong subdivision selling, kahit mag-999 pa kayo, hindi pwede. Mahuhuli na kasi meron ng internal agreement kayo ang uh, LRA, pati ang um, DHSO, Department of Human Settlements and Urban Development. So, bawal po itong rollout. Now, if you are dealing with this, you will be liable for STAPA and violation of PD 957 and even the rest alo, no? Merong kulong provision. So, Yan po, no? Yan ang short uh, discussion ko on uh, these things, no? So, with that, um, I am ready now for, I think uh, we're done. Okay na tayo. Okay lang, wala na si Janelle. So, Meron po 